Okay, today we'll be looking at the sine and cosine ratios for complementary angles. Some vocabulary, of course, hopefully from geometry. You remember some vocabulary. Complementary would be, my, what nice tie-dye crocs you have on your feet. As opposed to complementary, subtle change in the spelling. Look at an E instead of an I. And when we have the E, instead of paying polite respects to someone, you're talking about supplementing, right? Or adding to. And so for complementary angles, they have a sum of 90 degrees. So let's figure out whether these angles are complementary. 40 degrees and 50 degrees. Yes, those are complementary. Why? Because 40 and 50 adds up to 90. 30 and 60. Yes, those are also complementary. 30 plus 60 is 90. 19 degrees and 91 degrees. Might want to get some scratch paper or calculator, but sure enough, they add up to 90. All right, 19 plus 71 makes 90. Measure of angle A and measure of angle B. Now, of course, uh, we have any old angle A and any old angle B, we're kind of stuck. But if we have a right triangle and we can locate angle A and angle B on that right triangle, we're like, oh, hey, we're in business. For any triangle, we know the sum of the three angles must be 180 degrees. And of course, in a right triangle, angle C will be 90 degrees. So if we subtract 90 degrees from each side of that equation, we now know that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B must be 90 degrees. So yeah, yep, you sure, yep, betcha. Those are complementary. So if we're talking about measures of angle A and B in a right triangle, yes, they are complementary. All right, the two acute angles in a right triangle are always complementary. Right? That will also be true for any right triangle that the two acute angles will be complementary. In other words, they'll add up to 90 degrees. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what this has to do with what we're just doing, but let's have some fun with it. Cosine of A. Uh, find cosine of A if sine of B is 3 over 5. Well, I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite side B has to be the 3. Hypotenuse is 5. Well, I know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I'm at angle A, the adjacent side is 3, and the hypotenuse is 5. So cosine of angle A would be 3 fifths. Hmm, that's the same as the sine of B. Interesting. Find sine of A if cosine of B equals 5 eighths. Okay, now cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the side adjacent to angle B has to be 5. Hypotenuse has to be 8. And if I want the sine of A, i got to go to angle A and look for the side that is opposite. And opposite A would be 5. Hypotenuse is 8. Hey, hey, look at that. Once again, we got an identical answer. So if A and B are complementary angles, oh, this is the hook. This is why we're going back to that. If A and B are complementary angles, then sine of A equals cosine of B, and sine of B equals cosine of A. Hmm, now the plot is about to thicken. 
we know that A and B have to add up to 90 degrees. So therefore, we know that A is 90 degrees minus B. And we also know that B equals 90 degrees minus A. Knowing that, if we have the sine of 90 degrees minus A, it'll be the same as the cosine of B. And if we have the cosine of 90 degrees minus A, it'll be the same as sine of B. Right? Because, again, that's a complementary angle definition, right? The sum of them has to be 90 degrees. So if we take one of them away from 90 degrees, we get the other one. So if we got sine or cosine, we can write, rewrite them in terms of the other. Okay, let's see if this is really working, right? 90 minus 30 is 60. So the claim is the sine of 30 degrees has to be the same as the sine of 60 degrees. Uh, how are we going to do this? Ooh. Oh, what a beautiful masterpiece. Thank you, Bob. There's Bob Ross coming through with the masterpiece. Although, actually, uh, just a triangle would probably do better. And, uh, ooh, hey. We're going to have one of our friends show up. We need one of the special right triangles. We need the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Now, of course, the sine of 30 degrees is one half because if I'm at 30, I can look at opposite. I can look at hypotenuse and I get one over two. Cosine of 60 degrees is also one half because if I'm at 60 degrees, the adjacent side is one. The hypotenuse is two. So, yes, sine of 30 degrees equals cosine of 60 degrees. Right, 90 take away 30 gives us 60. Write the expression in terms of cosine. So sine of 40 degrees is the same as cosine of 50 degrees. Right, because 90 subtract 40 is 50. Sine of 73 degrees. That's going to be the cosine of 17 degrees. All right, if I got 90, I subtract 73, I get 17. Oh, going the opposite direction now. We want to rewrite in terms of sine. So if I've got cosine of 27 degrees, that'd be the same as the sine of 63 degrees. 90 subtract 27 is 63. Cosine of 48 degrees is the same as the sine of 42 degrees. 90 subtract 48 is 42. Hey, let's find the tangent of 30 degrees. Okay. Uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of 30 is 1. Adjacent is root 3. Hmm, interesting color pattern. So the answer is 1 over square root of 3. But there are more things to reveal. Oh, that's right. Square root of 3 in the denominator. <laughs> nah. We're going to multiply by the number 1, and we're going to disguise the number 1 as root 3 over root 3. So in the numerator, 1 times root 3, of course, is root 3. In the denominator, root 3 times root 3 is root 9. And, of course, the square root of 9 is just 3. So we've got a final answer. The tangent of 30 degrees is equal to a root 3 over 3. So we're being revisited by our 30, 60, 90 triangle here. We're being revisited with our Sokotoa. And, oh, it looks like it's going to be time for a worksheet. And pray to fish under the sea. Doo, doo, doo. Wow, what a variety of fish. Doo, doo, doo. And more. Even more fish. It looks like our worksheet is starting to fade into the ocean there. 
And there it goes. Okay, so it is time for the worksheet. The fish have all swam by. And the word worksheet itself has just disappeared in the ocean.